Hello, Ken Superstars. This is Professor Don Bush. I've been a professor for about 30 years and a CPA for about that long, and I've got great ways to explain accounting. You've come to the right place here, folks. Well, today's lesson is about contribution margin. It's designed for students who are probably in their second semester of accounting class and uh, learning managerial accounting. So uh, today's lesson is really simple. We'll probably buzz right through this lesson today. Hey, by the way, I've got a, a web page called accountingsuperstars.com where I've got all these videos listed by topic where they're easier to find. And um, let's see here, what else? It's a beautiful day here in Colorado, nice and warm. And I live up in the mountains about 8,500 feet. And it's absolutely beautiful. The folks in Denver are having a heat wave. It's about 95 degrees down there, but it's about 75 here, so it's just perfect. So here's what's going on with the contribution margin. I've got a picture here that says, so what? So what about this contribution margin? Why should we learn it? What's the big deal? Well, here's the big deal, is that it's a simple tool to use and it is incredibly powerful. It's amazing. You can do all kinds of things with it. So uh, here, here's some things. It helps managers make decisions regarding, number one here, choice of products and services offered. And this is uh, more important than one might think. You don't want to offer any product or any service. Some, some products or services may not be profitable and some may not be profitable enough to offer. So uh, this contribution margin statement will help you decide what to offer, what, what to do. Number two, choice of marketing strategy here. Should we um, advertise this? Should we lower our price? Should we raise our price? Should we sell to a different segment of people? So really great stuff here. And then the pricing of products too. Um, again, should we uh, you know, maybe uh, use a skimming uh, strategy or maybe start at a very low price and work our way up? Uh, all kinds of things. Number four, utilization of productive facilities. So um, it, it, we might be able to use this to indicate uh, where bottlenecks are in, in the production process. And also what uh, products um, we should manufacture and wh which ones we should sell. Now, if that is not enough, here is something else. We can calculate the break-even point. Now the break-even point, that is where we sell just enough to break even. We're not making a loss, we're not losing money, and we're, we're not making money, but here's where we break even. Something really useful to know. Also, it's a, a great uh, way to uh, figure out, well, how close are we to the break even point? Uh, are, are, is what we're doing rather risky? And number two here, deter quickly determine, and, and you can underline that word quickly, quickly determine a new idea of feasibility. So some people come up with an idea, hey, maybe we should offer this, maybe we should do that. And you can quickly determine whether or not the idea is feasible. It, it's really cool. And as a bonus, and the best thing of all, it's super easy. So what is this contribution margin? Well, here's what it is. Income statements. Now, uh, since this is probably your second semester of accounting, you probably already know what an income statement is. And the income statements that are, you have learned are, are great and everything. And, and they're the uh, financial statements that are uh, written out according to generally accepted accounting principles. And they're the financial statements that you'll see with um, old financial reports, that, that kind of thing. They're, they're the most common vanilla flavored income statements. And they, they are pretty good in, in the fact that they're, they're called general purpose financial statements in that they're, they're made for everybody. And, and since they're made for everybody, they're not really great for one single purpose. So that's why they call them general purpose in, income statements. And uh, But the thing is, is if we can rearrange the income statement, we can learn some things about a company. Now, uh, one problem, though, is that uh, when I say rearrange the financial statements, uh, we need to have some in, inside information. And that is, we, we probably have to be working for the company, a manager for the company, uh, somebody who has access to the accounting system. So uh, here's an example. The, in the green here, financial statement uh, per gap, this is the one that you learned in Principles of Accounting 1, where you start out with sales and you minus cost of goods sold and you have gross margin and you have selling expenses, administrative expenses, and finally end up with net income. 
Well, if we can rearrange this, we can learn really amazing things uh, about a company. And again, the only way we can do this is if we have um, uh, we have access to the accounting system. So you have to be a manager to do this. So uh, the contribution margin income statement, here's how it's rearranged. It, it, all it is is rearranged. We're not adding anything. We're not subtracting anything. We're, we're just moving things around a bit. To, to give you an example, both income statements start out with the same amount of sales. We, we start out with $1 million in sales. I'm going to highlight this in a color here so it stands out a bit. So here we have sales of $1 million. And on the contribution margin statement, we also have sales of $1 million. So sales is not getting rearranged. All right, sales is staying the same. And then if you look at the net income, we have $120,000 net income. And uh, on the contribution margin income statement, we also have $120,000 net income. And so what this means is we start out the same, we end the same, and that's, this is how it always works. But it's what happens in the middle, that's where things get rearranged a bit. So we start out the same, end up the same, but it's in the middle where things get moved around. So here's how things get moved around. Rather than calling things cost of goods sold or selling expenses or administrative expenses, we call them uh, variable costs or fixed costs. So here's variable costs. I'm going to highlight that. Variable costs and here are fixed costs. All right, so we're just moving things around and renaming things and it's really useful to do this. And so variable costs, we have $700,000. There we go. And how do we figure out the contribution margin? Well, it's really easy. A million dollars minus 700,000 is the contribution margin. In other words, sales minus variable costs is the contribution margin. And fixed costs are 180,000. There we go. So 300,000 minus 180,000 is 120,000. So all we're doing, folks, is renaming things, moving things around a little bit, but it starts out the same, ends up the same. Um, so anyways, the, this contribution margin income statement, uh, it's really simple. This is as difficult as it gets. This is everything there is to it right here. It's right there in front of you. And so what I would do if it were me and I was in principles of accounting two or managerial accounting, I would memorize this. Just memorize it. It'll, it'll pay off so much for you. Just know it. Just memorize it today. The way I memorize it is sales minus variable costs is contribution margin. Fixed costs, uh, or I'm sorry, contribution margin minus fixed cost is net income. Done. That's it. That's all there is to it. You can do that. Now, on this uh, contribution margin income statement, probably the most important number is right here, the contribution margin. This is where you make decisions. So I'm going to highlight that in a bright green. That is the most important number right there. A lot of people think net income is the most important number. It isn't. If you want to make good decisions, focus on contribution margin. Don't focus on sales. Don't focus on anything else. And I've seen this happen with businesses where they're, they're thinking about offering a, a new product or a new program or something, and they focus on the top line. They focus on sales, and then they focus on profitability too. But uh, they focus on sales. How much revenue will it generate? Well, the amount of revenue it generates may or may not really matter. What really matters is the contribution margin. That is the most important number. That is the point where you make your decisions. All right. So going down, down the page. So here's how we can format the uh, contribution margin income statement. By the way, this is the exact same statement that we just did a moment ago. So here are a couple of really important things. When it comes to the contribution margin statement, you can have things in total or on a per unit basis. All right. Now, in total, that's what we just finished doing is in, in total here. Uh, and so let, let me show you what I mean here. So sales, we've got sales at a million dollars. That's grand total, all the sales together, uh, maybe on a monthly basis or a yearly basis. Or what you can do is you can have sales on a unit basis. Now, this is the Sunset Sailboat Company, and they sell expensive sailboats, like 30-foot sailboats. And this sailboat uh, sells for $100,000 each per sailboat. Big, expensive sailboats. So, so on this little uh, contribution margin in income statement, it doesn't matter. You can have your numbers in total 
or on a per unit basis. Either way, you know, you can find out some really cool things. Variable costs, exact same thing. You can have that on a total basis or on a per unit basis. Either way, you know, you wh whatever suits your purposes. And the contribution margin, same thing again. You can have it on a grand total basis or a per unit basis. Now, I've got fixed costs here in red because I put it in red because of danger. You got to watch out here. Look out. And, and your textbook is going to try to fool you. And um, if you on your test. Maybe your, your professor is going to try to fool you too on your test. And I remember on the CPA exam, they tried to fool me on the CPA exam, but I knew better. And so I was not fooled. And so here's the deal. When it comes to fixed costs, always, always, always have it on a grand total basis. So look at this. Uh, the fixed costs on a grand total basis is $180,000. I'm trying to find a color that, oh, that's an ugly color. The, those two colors don't match. I think I'll just have to leave it the way it is. I thought I'd highlight it, but it wasn't working out here. So, um, so fixed costs, you must have them on a total basis. I'll guarantee you 100%, you're a money back guarantee, that if you put fixed costs on a per unit basis, you will get the wrong answer. All right, and that's where they're going to try to fool you, your teacher, your textbook, on the homework, on the test, whatever. Always put fixed costs on a full total basis. Now, if in the information they don't give you the fixed costs in a total on a total basis, but they give it to you on a per unit basis, you got to figure out the grand total, the grand total. So that's why I have 180,000 in the total column and 180,000 in the per unit column because it won't work, folks, on a per unit basis. Now, so what we've got going here is on the per unit basis here, the sales, variable costs, and contribution margin, these three numbers, that's like having apples, all right? And this 180,000 is like an orange. It, they don't compare, they don't mix. Well, they do mix. I, I like apples and oranges. They, I think they mix well. But, um, but when it comes to this, they don't. It's more like uh, oil and water. Oil and water don't mix. So we can't mix them. So that's why for net income, I have not applicable because it doesn't make any sense. We've got things on a per unit basis and then fixed costs on a total basis. So net income, it's like, uh, it doesn't make any sense here. So, but it does make sense if everything's on a grand total basis. All right, so that's important. Don't forget that fixed costs have to be on a grand total basis. Now, using percentages, this is also key here, folks, but it's really easy, super easy. Here's what it is. For sales, always write down 100%. That's all you do, 100%, 100% of the time. Nothing else goes there, 100%. You don't have to think about this. No thinking required. I copied down uh, the um, chart from up above. This, this, The numbers are identical to the chart up above, so... Um, and so you might say, why did you copy the, the chart down below? Well, the reason why is I wanted to keep this chart up here as simple as possible. So that way you'd understand things like we could have things on a total basis or a per unit basis and fixed costs have to be on a total basis always. All right. So, but uh, something else that we need is we need percentages. We, we need them. So uh, don't skip this step when you're doing your homework. All right. So figure out the percentages. Now to figure out the uh, variable cost percentage right here, all we have to do is go 70,000 divided by 100,000, or if you want, 700,000 divided by, by a million. You know, either way, you're going to get the same answer. That's one thing that's really cool about it. You're not going to get different percentages. Percentages will always be the same. So pick ever, whichever column you like. Contribution margin, well, there's two ways to figure out contribution margin. We could go 30,000 divided by 100,000, that would work. Or we could go 100% minus 70% is 30%. So there's two ways you can do it. Either way is fine. There you go. Now, uh, when it comes to fixed costs, they're always on a grand total basis, just as a review, but the percentage is not really applicable. It doesn't help us. And the percentage for net income, that, that really never helps us either in, in working these kind of problems. So all you need are percentages for sales, variable costs, and contribution margin. That's it.
That's all you need. So here's some questions. So what is the contribution margin per sailboat? Well, here it is right here. We could answer that right there. Contribution mar there it is. Wrong place. Contribution margin per sailboat is $30,000. That is the point where you make your decisions. That is the most important uh, number. And what's going to also be super important is the contribution margin percentage. So these two numbers are super, super important. So what does the contribution margin mean? Well, what it means is, it, it, well, let's define it first. It's simply sales minus the variable cost equals contribution margin. So the contribution margin is the, the uh, money that uh, can be used to cover fixed costs and make a profit, all right? So covering fixed costs make a profit. And in this example here, the total contribution is 300,000 and the fixed costs are 180,000. So they are covering their fixed costs and they are making a profit. So that's what it means. And but more importantly, that's this is the point where the decision is made. So how many sailboats must be sold to break even? Well, uh, that is, how many sailboats would it take in order to have a profit of zero, you know, where we break even? And in this case, since they're already making a profit, well, um, how far could sales go down by before we start losing money? So that, that would be an interesting question. So here's how it all works. It's really simple. Here is a handy chart to kind of understand this. So the break even point right here, this is where we're not making a profit and we're not making a loss. And if we're selling less than the break-even point, that means we're losing money. And if we're selling more than the break-even point, that means we're making money. So we want to figure out where is this point. And in reality, it's it's um, kind of a rough si science. It's not a real exact science. So, so roughly speaking, that is where the break-even point would be. So here's how you do it. Super, super, super easy. So formula right here. Fixed costs divided by the contribution margin percentage. So where'd we get that? Well, here, let me split the screen and we will see. Let's go back up to this chart that we were looking at a moment ago. So here we are. So I told you that uh, the $30,000, the contribution margin and the contribution margin percentage are the most important numbers, and they are. I'm not joking about that. So what we do is we take our fixed costs, which are 180,000, and you can take them from either column because they're both the same. You never put it on a per unit basis, always grand total. So fixed costs divided by the contribution margin percentage, and we have it. It's that easy, and that's our break-even point. So here we go. So let's uh, put in the fixed cost, 180,000. Contribution margin percentage, 30%. And this is going to give us the break-even point in sales dollars, $600,000. So if their sales are $600,000, they're just going to break even. Now their sales are a million dollars. So they're above their break-even point. So they're operating above. So in other words here, the break-even point right here where, this, where the two lines cross, that is $600,000. That's what the sales have got to be. But fortunately, they're, they've got uh, more sales than that, so they're operating in the profit area. So let's double check our work. Let's double check our work. So all we have to do is re remember the break-even sales is $600,000. So double check. So let's, put, let's try it out. Let's see if it really works. So $600,000. Now, folks, the percentage for sales is always what? Do you remember? It, it never varies from this. It's always 100%, never fails. Uh, variable costs, now, we don't know exactly what that is, but one thing we do know, we do know from our work up above here that the variable cost percentage is 70%. I'm gonna highlight that in a nice greeny color here. 70%, so let's drop that number down here. So 70% times sales, 600,000, is going to give us our variable costs. There we go, 420,000. You might say, well, what are variable costs? Variable costs are things like uh, direct labor and materials, you know, direct materials to make the boats. And the contribution margin, two ways we could do it. We could subtract or we could, you know, uh, multiply it by its percentage, and, and its percentage is 30%. How did I know that? Well, I could take it off the chart up there, or I could just simply 
subtract here, 100% minus 70% is 30%. And to figure out the contribution margin, all you do is sub subtract here. Or if you want to do it the hard way, just go 30% times 600,000. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. So 180,000. So uh, next comes the fixed cost. And the fixed cost, we take off our chart up here. And we can take either number because they should be listed in grand total amount. All right? So don't forget that. Or you're going to get that problem wrong in your test. All right? And so uh, contribution margin minus uh, fixed cost is net income, which is zero. So there you go, folks. So there's a really great introduction to... Uh, contribution margin and how this all works. It's really cool stuff. I, you, once you understand it, you'll, you'll love it. It's so easy to use and it's useful. I mean, practical too. But what you got to do is you have to memorize this format. Memorize it. I mean, come on, it's not that hard. Sales minus variable costs equals contribution margin. Contribution margin minus fixed costs is net income. I'll tell you what could be easier. Check out my webpage, accountingsuperstars.com. All the videos are listed by topic and you can find what you're looking for. Also, hit the subscribe button and the like button, and that way YouTube will know you like these videos. I'll know if you like these videos. Hey, also in the comments, you can write down things that you want to learn about. I mean, tell me what you're struggling on in accounting, and uh, maybe I can make a video about it. So until next time, over and out.